1k subs means I now have Big Nose Energy. Sprinkles of lore get thrown in and heroes pretend to be heroes while the real ones come in black. It's Dom Brothers, I mean Dragonfire Episode 20. We are starting this week's episode off with our not main character Jiro, living in a shack due to his limited income and having only a minimal wardrobe, thus why he needs to do laundry every day, he's reminiscing about his ex-girlfriend Rumi, who he left behind in the country. Though I know nothing of this girl besides the little introduction we had with Jiro's video, but this seems like an FBI open up situation if you ask me. But right as he finishes reminiscing about her, she calls, looking to stop by the area to check up on things. Leaving her with the promise of being a hero and lacking in those traits, he turns to the Down Brothers for assistance. Why all this hustle just to impress his ex-girlfriend? It seems like Jiro has been leaving her to be a hero since they were kids. But I guess he just kept coming back? This sets off Black Kaito for a bit, but Jiro seeks to have the Don Brothers serve as his companions. Taro is all for this since it should help to train his team, though since he can't lie, he won't step down. Instead, he'll just take a back seat to the events. But it seems that the team ups just can't wait. The time to form the new squad starts now, introducing Avajiro Sentai Dragonfires. That's right, this man took the kanji for Ta and replaced it with G because he's just that petty. Look, I spent more time looking up this kanji than working on this review. I downloaded kanji apps, I tried looking at Hiragana the kanji conversions, I figured it was probably a Jiro pun, but I just had to be sure. But it was in the Japanese Wikipedia page that ended up helping me out at the very end. The stupid research I do for these reviews sometimes. All that aside, they had a missed opportunity to completely change the intro to the show this episode, but it's a one-off. Either way, Jiro manages to get a wardrobe change and begins training his new squad in the pouring rain. Tsubasa, meanwhile, starts to reminisce about Natsumi again and his hopes to just reincarnate back into himself so he can be back with her yet again. Bro, you mean you don't want to actually reincarnate into the guy that actually gets the girl? Low effort. While being down in the dumps about not being able to see Natsuki again after this past year, he quickly ends up seeing the Don Brothers that he has no idea are actually the Don Brothers training. Questioning their decision to even train in the rain, so Yoshi invites him over. Though initially rejected, he's like, I got this, I'm a dog man after all. Though, he knows Jiro and doesn't end up putting two and two together. So, at this point, I just ended up flipping my Monopoly board as I watched another missed opportunity here. Tsubasa quickly realizes that he's not cut out for running up the stairs and chooses to run away from the cops instead. Jiro gets word of an emergency and scrambles the squad. The emergency turns out being a guy having medical problems while driving. Though they assist in stopping the vehicle, Black Kaito looks on with disapproval. Jiro suggests boosting up the public image of the dragon fires by taking on regular emergencies. The thought of doing regular help in order to hog the glory makes the team feel that Jiro's way is the right way. Black Kaito disapprovingly overhears all of this go down. This week's Hitotsuki is another non-factor. With the manly bra of Kung Fu, we have our Die Ranger Monster of the Week. Meanwhile, the Dragon Tires continue saving people in the public eye, getting all sorts of media attention. All this while Black Kaito disapprovingly watches TV. Meanwhile, Sunoni Almost. I give up has questions regarding Baby Shark Murasame. It's here that we get some sort of explainer regarding just exactly he is. Da Murasame is actually an artificial being that's been set free. Though if his awareness was made known to the council, the connection between them and this mother is becoming a bit clearer. Sonoza on the other hand seems obsessed with Haruka's manga. All this while a random scouting agent confronts the three to be in a film. 
Man, I wish that would just happen to me. Back with the firebombs, Jiro set up a website for the team, and their popularity is starting to go to their heads. Black Kaito chimes in that their arrogance will end up making their noses go to Viagra levels of growth, but they are too into themselves to even care. The Hitotsuki, on the other hand, is making the rounds, taking on fighting opponents. That's when Taro shows up to give him the business. Business or not, we get the fighting return of Black Zenkaiser, being a pretty damn raw in the fight as well. Though feeling matched, the Hitotsuki leaves, which seems like out of character, right? It's trying to be strong. Anyway, that's when Taro asks the question Haruka's already asked like three times before, but Black Kaito will actually talk to Taro, so... Who is he? A hero. That's it. That's all we get. Joining back with the trash fires at an award ceremony, they are ready to reveal themselves to take all of the glory personally. And they've even gained that big nose energy in return, giving their arrogance a full view. It's at this point that the Dom Blasters show up with real work. However, nothing's gonna get in the way of their big moment and they reject Taro once more. Black Kaito disapprovingly confronts them, pointing out that their success has actually been at Taro's hand, supporting them from the shadows, becoming an action figure in the process since their CG budget was blown on the noses. The Burnt Toasts end up figuring out that for like the 20th time, they actually did Taro wrong and go to his aid. Though, not Jiro. Feeling outdone, useless, and unworthy once again at the hands of Taro, he snaps. Oh yeah, Damurasame shows up, but Sanoe's trying to put a leash on that thing and take him somewhere else. Setting that Murasame was created by the council, the fighting ceases since they gotta go star in a movie. Murasame also leaves. What? Back to Jiro, sporting a new hairstyle and overcoat, his makeup game is on point as he summons a new gear and transforms into Don Turabolt. Taking on Taro directly, Momo ain't got time for this shit, so Jiro goes after the Hitotsuki, and boy, is his fighting style just nasty. He does the Hitotsuki in with a flashy finisher, sending his eyes back to Taro, though he bigly ignores him and goes down in the Taijin on the Hitotsuki. Meanwhile, the whole point of this episode goes to waste, with Jiro's ex-girlfriend deciding not to visit. All this while Black Kaito decides he's gonna take the glory for all of the Dragonfire's work. Big Nose Energy up to an 11. With this week's Don Bros, we get the new form of our great value brand Momo with Don Torabolt. With that, let's talk forms. I honestly prefer the gold and red on the chest armor of Dora Goku over this. The silver and white kind of offset the remaining color scheme of the first design. Had they changed the whole suit to match it like this, it would look more pleasing. Or instead of the white, just make that portion silver as well. It's meh. Rating time! So this week's episode was indeed a banger for sure. Since we get a small dose of lore, we also get some character regressions and re-acceptance. But Jiro's mental shift is one that looks like it's gonna stick around for a while. So after watching this episode for a third time, I'm gonna end up cranking this one to a Shinken S. Kaito's mysterious self is the biggest highlight of this week's episode, showing off more of how his attitude actually is. He may not be the god from Zenkaiger, but his whole hero talk? Maybe. His is just this world's version of Kaito. Or his reincarnation. See, in this episode, we had a line that seemed a little bit like a throwaway line in terms of Tsubasa with Natsumi. Him implying that if he could reincarnate, he would just reincarnate into himself. Now what if this applies to Kaito? After all, he was already a hero. So what does that mean to have always been a hero and be born a hero? His moralities still stand. Until he got dick-nosed at the end, but that's a whole different thing. Next, we have Jiro, who's finally snapped thanks to Taro. Though, by the end of this week's episode and the look of the preview for next week, he doesn't seem to snap back. We get a real eeny meeny miny mo situation with this guy, and it'll be interesting to see how he overcomes this dynamic, if at all. After all, this change actually doesn't even have an effect on Taro. Though overcoming his demons 
might give Jiro a mid-season power-up for all we know. The biggest drawback to this week's episode really is the clockwork that is the Dombros going from wanting Taro's acceptance, but quickly disavow from him the moment an opportunity presents itself. There is some setups for the summer film in this episode, but they tied it up to slowly getting development on Dom Murasame, who is in fact a weapon made by the Noto Council to do... I don't know. He's directionless without mother. So what did you all think on this week's Dragon Fires? Jiro snap back, Big Nose energy, and Black Kaito being the hero we all deserve. Kaito really is the saving grace of this episode after all. Anyway, that's it for me. Keep your noses small and your egos smaller. Until next time, bye. I'm gonna get it this time.